another series oh, sorry another like episode of the sundown webinar thanks for joining us today on this thursday to learn more about kiwanis family relations so just to jump straight into it the different types of kiwanis family branches um so kiwanis is has many different service leadership programs, also known as SLPs. So we start from elementary, we have K Kids. Then on the middle school level, we have Builders Club. On the high school level, we have Key Club and Key Wins. Key Wins is only in CNH. Um, on the college level, that's us. We have Circle K and then past college or past high school, um, people can join Kiwanis and Action Club is for adults with disabilities. So next is the divisional boundaries on how each Circle K division lines up with like a key club division. Um, keep in mind that your guys' divisions may line up with different key wins and Kiwanis divisions. So you guys just want to check in with yourself locally. Um, so for example, let's say I'm from the Paradise division. So we correlate, we work with the division in our area for key club, which include 11, 21, 22, and 31. Um, it, so you guys can see which division you guys are in. I'm not going to really say each number for each division, um, but these are the different types of key clubs that you guys work closely with. Um, next are the counterparts, also known as CPs. Um, so for example, you guys have your positions in your divisions and also within the district. It's the same within Key Club and Kiwanis. So for example, district governors, district treasurers, district secretaries, um, not all of the time is this exact, but we do have very similar positions like different chair positions, um, like KFF, I have two CPs uh, with Kiwan Key Wins and Key Club. So, yeah, these are the CPs. So you guys get that in your vocabulary for um, Circle K. Um, moving on to communication, working with SLPs. Um, the number one rule when contacting an SLP, always CC a Kawanian. This is number one. You guys shouldn't be contacting them without CCing an advisor uh, or Kawanian. This could be like the Circle K region advisor the Key Club Region Advisor or Kiwanis Advisor. Um, communicating with other SLPs, for example, Action Club, reach out to their Action Club Advisor with their sponsoring club. For K Kids and Builders Club, you want to contact their Kiwanis LTG. It's also a great resource to help connect you and communicate through the Faculty Advisor. Next are the is the ERF. If you guys don't know what an ERF is, it is the Event Request Form, and these this is a form that you have to submit in advance in order to do an event with an SLP. You have to plan ahead, you have to get permission from advisors, and you have to work closely with them to make sure everyone is on the same page. So ERFs must be submitted at least three weeks in advance. Always do it earlier. Please don't do this last minute. You don't want to plan last minute with these because it does take a lot of planning and approval. It has a long approval process, so always keep everyone in the loop. Any events with an SLP must be ERF first on the divisional level, unless they're being hosted by the sponsoring Kiwanis branch. And if you have any doubts with this, always ask your region advisor. Continuing on, establishing contact. Members should be going through the LTG to establish new relationships. So one could be you contacting your CP. Another one um, is sending an introduction email. LTG should be sending out an email introducing themselves to their LTG counterparts, and chairs should also be doing the same through the Circle K governor to establish contact. And then if you are planning to help in the future, try to attend earlier events and be responsive to questions and emails. So this could be attending Key Club DCMs, attending their conferences and hosting, stuff like that. So maintaining communication. Um, always communicate with your club advisor often, email updates to your sponsoring Kiwanis Club, invite members to attend, you know, your Kiwanis Club meetings, DCMs, sponsored events, and banquets. You want to, so this is with more Kiwanis, you know, Kiwanis is there to help us, they're sponsoring you guys, they want to be with you guys, they, they want to be in the loop, so try to attend more of their events, 
they want to see you guys present there. They want to see that you guys are still active and that you want to work with them. So try and attend, you know, their DCMs monthly or go to some of their service projects, participate in their fundraisers. This is also the same for the SLPs, but you also do need permission to go to these. So make sure to always seek permission before attending. Um, send out monthly to biweekly emails to your Kiwanis clubs to keep them in the loop. Plan out any, sorry, plan out any small or large scale events with your Kiwanis branches. An example of, uh, and a good example of this is the Key to College event that many Circle Ks hold for their key clubs. Okay, now working together. Rule of threes, at least two adults, a Circle K, a Kiwanian, in conversation with a key clubber. Always keep the 12 to one ratio for one day events with key clubbers, 12 key clubbers and one Kwanian. For example, Key to College or the Sacramento State of Gift Giving, Santa's Gift of Service. Use appropriate communication channels, emails versus text. Um, we are in a professional setting, so make sure you guys use emails. Uh, you don't wanna you know, use a bunch of slang communicating. You don't wanna get, you know, caught lacking in a way while talking to these SLPs because you are the adult in this situation. And remember, when you do email, you must have a Kwanian in that in that email CC. Um, social media rule: Key clubbers can add Circle K and Kwanian members on platforms, but it cannot be reversed. Uh, once again, the key clubber can add a Circle K or Kwanian member but it cannot be the Circle K member or Kwanin adding them first. A key clubber can send a Facebook friend request to a Circle K member, but a Circle K member cannot add a key clubber first. So keep that in mind. You got, we are adults. Please don't be following the key clubbers first if they do follow you or if, you know, vice versa. Chaperone background checks. Chaperones are required for in-person events involving Kiwanis Family Youth branches. So that includes Key Club, Kiwins, Builders Club, and K Kids. All chaperones for youth branches must go through a Kiwanis approved background check. And then the background check is then requested. The background check is requested through Kiwanis International and completed through an email link. Um, and this, this link has the youth protection guidelines for everything. Okay, now for collaboration. Just like a brief summary of everything. When you work with the SLPs or Kiwanis, you wanna ask yourself, how is this event beneficial for both of you guys? Are you guys showing enthusiasm towards the Kiwanis family and or this event? Is this the right time for a Kiwanis family event? And then how you can support the other branches, you know, with Kiwanis sharing different resources, offering to help with technology at an event, volunteering at their fundraisers, Key Club, college resources and mentoring, K Kids and Builders Club sponsoring joint service projects, and Action Club sponsoring an Action Club event and joint service projects. So, um, coming from Key Club, I do know that whenever our Circle K was present at our events and presented about college or gave us advice or like showing the difference between community and university. I know I was very grateful for that type of information from Circle K since we were within the same organization. So I recommend, you know, hosting an informational college college webinar or doing a Thai DC, a joint DCM with um, your local key club or key wins. Okay, now is the important KFAM timeline. So it, it is, we are moving already towards this whole term but you know during april and may that's when the term changes for key club and key wins and then june and august is the college status forum and kfam training september october is the kiwanis term change kiwanis one day and circle k international week november is kiwanis family month scholarship apps open and key club week december is rose float decorating January and February is scholar when scholarship applications close. March is Action Club and Builders Club Week. And April is Kiwanis Appreciation Month. So this is just like an overview of, you know, each important, each of the branches and like special themed weeks and all that stuff. So you can see where you could place your collaborations with the different branches in this timeline. Okay, now working with KFAM and to conclude once again, Important, how will the event 
our project be beneficial to the participating branches? You know, is this the right time to host an event with them? The planning process and how to effectively carry it out. Is it just one person working on everything or is everyone hands on with it? The advisors in on it. Um, think about the positive outcomes of the collaboration. You know, all of your effect, all of your planning, you want a positive outcome, stuff like that. And then what to do, you guys could do fundraisers, service projects, DCM, or conference invitation or collaboration, bonding events and socials. Um, so like host a boba fundraiser with the Key Club, do a service project with your Kiwanis, do a joint DCM with your Kiwanis too, do a fundraiser at that DCM, present at your Key Club's conference. You know, RTC is coming up soon for Key Club. So that's where you guys wanna try and see and reach out to the your guys' local lieutenant governors be like, hey, our Circle K is interested in presenting at your guys' region training conference coming up. Would you guys like us to be there? And then also work towards that. Um, bonding events and socials, you know, host like an ice cream social with your Kiwanis, go get ice cream together, stuff like that. And um, then keep in mind that before you do any of these, all advisors must be on board with the event and must have prior approval before continuing to plan the event via ERF. Um, so yeah, <laughs> um, are there any questions, comments, or concerns? I know I did breeze that, breeze through this presentation pretty quickly, but the information I hope is pretty straightforward and understandable for you guys. You guys can ask it in the chat um, privately, or you can speak on mic. Yes. <laughs> What is uh, an example of like not the right time for a joint event? Because I remember there were a few slides that were talking about that. So not the right time for joint event. This could be like, for example, if since key, you know how Key Club has fall rally and you know you don't want to be doing an event near that fall rally time because everyone's going to be so busy because um, everyone's going to be doing spirit sessions, spirit socials. You don't want to host an event that you think would have a lower attendance count unless they make it almost required for them to attend that event to, in order to go to a fall rally. But that's just an example because, you know, the LTG are so busy planning. You don't want to like stress them out more with um, adding another event before that fall rally south or fall rally north. So yeah. Is there like a super busy period for Kiwanis too or? Like... For Kiwanis, oh. So for Kiwanis, I know there is a convention coming up around August. Someone can correct me if that is wrong for sure. But I, yes, there, I know there is a convention happening in August. So it's July. Thinking. Yeah, so probably around this time. Okay, it's, thank you, Austin. <laughs> Sorry. But um, honestly, I think it's kind of different for each of the Kiwanis clubs because everyone has different events happening during certain times. I, the only thing I know right now is that there's a convention coming up, so everyone's just planning to attend that one. But do contact your local Kiwanis, see what, you know, what they have on their calendar and see if you can squish your, yourselves in there. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Hopefully that made sense. Oh, I have yes. a question. No one else has a question. Yeah. So, um, what are some uh, ways that we can um, market like the other Kiwanis family branches, such as uh, K Kids and Builders Club and Action Club, to our members? Because I know you talked a lot about Kiwanis and Key Clubs. I just wanted about like the other branches. Yeah. So, what you guys can do to, I guess, advertise about a Builders and K Kids and see if you guys have a local K Kids or Builders in your area. Or you guys can try and start one up, you know, at an elementary or middle school, get into contact with your Kiwanis and see, you know, hey, we want to sponsor this elementary and help them get a K-Kids so that they can, you know, start doing volunteering and all of that. Um, so that's just one good way, you know, get into contact with, you know, if you have connections with the local elementary or middle school, and then they can be like a feeder to your know, Kiko and then it's okay, continuing on. Um, do you have examples of like reasons why um, why a key, a key club or a Kiwanis might want to 
or in one of the slides you mentioned, um, like think about why it's beneficial for both the Circle K Club and you know the SLP. Uh, do you have examples of like reasons why SLPs might want to attend joint events with Circle K? Joint events with Circle K. I, I think I cut you off. That, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. Or right, how, Matt? Did you want to go first, or because I, I didn't see your hand raised? Okay. I mean, if you want to finish this question, you can. <laughs> so you you were asking why key clubbers would attend Circle K events, or yeah, kind of, or like, what are some what are some common ways you can market to Marketing? them that like to them that hey, you you guys should come if that makes sense. Or if you guys should do a joint event. Go to your guys' events. Um, yeah. like just a circle K event or like the joint event? Um both. Why not? All right, I'm gonna stop the page. So both. Um, so if it's a joint event, they should already be like, hey guys, this is our divisional event with a circle K, so you guys should be attending anyways. Um, another one is I hate to say it, but you have to kind of bribe them in a way and be like, this is why you should attend this event. It's beneficial for you. Um, be like, simple ways could just be like, if you come, you have the chance of winning this in a raffle, stuff like that. Because as a high schooler and as a key clubber, you kind of just like picking and choosing which attend which events to attend. So you want one that will catch their eye and make them want to go. Or the different, like the type of event, like if it's a little social dog toy making one, that would be fun. A lot of people need their service hours. Um, so yeah, hopefully that made sense. <laughs> Uh, I guess I can ask my question now. Uh, my question was that uh, I actually just got appointed for KFAM chair for Foothill Division. And I was Congratulations. Just, thank you. I was just wondering if you had any like tips for a KFAM chair because this is the first time for me being a KFAM chair. Cool, cool. So tips on a KFAM chair. What I can say is right away, just contact your Kiwanis first and then get all of their information, know their calendar, encourage your division to attend their DCMs and their events, like do it as a group so that they see all of you guys together going to the DCM, like, wow, my gosh, we got 10 Circle K people to come today. Yes, go KFAM chair. Um, same with your um, the other SLPs. You want to contact them. Be like, yes, our Circle K is alive. We are alive and we are doing well and we want to do these things with you. Um, I think the main thing starting out is just strong communication. You know, don't worry too much about doing too many events in the beginning. You just want to make sure that they know you guys are alive and that you are willing to start doing stuff with them. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a question as well. So uh, on the timeline from earlier, I know that it said that the Qantas One Day was generally around September, October. And uh, is there a specific date for that this year? Like Specific? I actually do not know that one. Dave, do you know what, or Austin, do you know? There is a specific day I'm pulling up right now. Okay, thank you. We'll get that for you, Dakota. <laughs> I suppose. Oh. Dave, do you have a question? I do. Okay. <laughs> First of all, welcome aboard. Um, I have a comment and a question. I, I think it's very refreshing to have somebody coming in from the key club of your rank and stature um, as a key fam. And I, I'm hoping that you'll be able to use that very, very recent experience um, to contact your fellow or your past key clubbers, lieutenant donors, to try to really encourage them to do the, the, what you're talking about with the key fam. Um, last year, our experience was obviously coming out of COVID. We did not have a great relationship. I shouldn't say it that way. We didn't have a lot of activities that were jointly done with Key Club. And I think you're in a very unique position with you being the chair uh, because you know a lot of those people that have come up to the ranks and they're following you to facilitate um, more key fan activities. Um, so it's very refreshing that, that you're coming in at the time you're coming in. Um, and hopefully you can do that. So I think my question to you would be, um, 
you know, what are your plans uh, to do that, to, to use your spirit and keep in contact um, with those uh, coming key players? Okay, thank you for your question, Dave. So um, I was newly appointed KFF chair just like a month ago, um, but we are working on not just starting up KFF committee and all of that, but I did mention to my um, KFF advisor that I do want to collaborate with both Key Wins and Key Club, kind of just to start off really small with like a spirit week, just so that we could all do stuff together. You know, nothing too big yet. And then um, just, I guess, jumping off from there. I do also want to listen to the KFF chair's own like opinions on what they want to do with us as well so that we can do something that they like from their perspective. So it's just like a lot of, I guess, basics right now. Fantastic. That, that's, I like to hear that. But um, yeah, so we're here to, we, as an advisor, I'm speaking for the other advisors that aren't with us, um, we're here to support that because we want to see that interaction and we want to see the Kiwanians part of that teaching and interaction. So um, we'll go forward. Can't wait to work with you. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. Um, seeing that as there are no other questions, we can just go ahead and end the webinar for now. And um, I sent the date for Kiwanis One Day in the chat, but for those who are watching the webinar, Kiwanis One Day this year is October 22nd. Yeah, well, thank you so much everyone for coming out to the webinar tonight and have a nice night. Thank you everyone. <laughs>